Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro says he's defeated a coup attempt launched by opposition leader Juan Guaido, the president of the Venezuela National Assembly. On Tuesday morning, Guaido appeared in an online video standing among heavily armed soldiers, calling for the military to oust Maduro. But the Venezuelan military appears to have remained largely behind Maduro. During the day, clash broke out between backers of Guaido and the Venezuelan government. There are reports more than 100 people were injured. On Tuesday night, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro gave a televised address and denied claims by U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that he'd prepared to flee the country. The skirmish in Venezuela has been defeated, and Mr. Trump set off a thousand expletives and lies. My God, how far are the men in the United States government willing to go? Maduro and Guaido have both called on supporters to take to the streets today. We'll have more on Venezuela after headlines. In Britain, a judge has sentenced WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to 50 weeks in jail for skipping bail in 2012 to avoid extradition to Sweden on sexual assault accusations, charges that were eventually dropped. He was afraid he would be extradited then to the United States. Last month, British police forcibly removed Assange from the Ecuadorian embassy, where he'd taken asylum for almost seven years to fight his possible extradition to the United States. After his arrest, U.S. authorities unsealed an indictment accusing Assange of conspiring with Army whistleblower Chelsea Manning, who leaked a trove of sensitive documents to WikiLeaks, including evidence of U.S. war crimes. A London court set to hear an extradition request by the United States on Thursday. The Washington Post reporting special counsel Robert Mueller wrote to Attorney General William Barr in March, complaining Barr misled the American public when he summarized Mueller's report in a four-page memo sent to Congress. According to the Post, Mueller said Barr's summary, quote, did not fully capture the context, nature and substance of his work, adding, quote, there is now public confusion about critical aspects of the results of our investigation. This threatens to undermine a central purpose for which the department appointed the special counsel to assure full public confidence in the outcome of the investigations, Mueller wrote. The revelation appears to directly contradict Barr's sworn testimony to Congress in April, when Barr was questioned by Democrat Chris Van Hollen of the Senate Appropriations Committee. Did Bob Mueller support your conclusion? I don't know whether Bob okay. Mueller supported my conclusion. Democrats are demanding an immediate investigation into whether Attorney General Barr deliberately sought to mislead the public over Mueller's findings. On Capitol Hill, a 35-year-old lawyer and activist who's dying of terminal ALS testified Tuesday in an historic, first-of-its-kind congressional hearing on Medicare for All. Adi Barkin spoke to the House Rules Committee using a computerized system that tracks his eye movements and turns them into spoken words. In this emotional testimony, Barkin described how, even with a comparatively good health insurance plan, he still pays about $9,000 a month for medical care. All of us need medical care. And yet in this country, the wealthiest in the history of human civilization, we do not have an effective or fair or rational system for delivering that care. I will not belabor the point, because you and your constituents are well aware of the problems, high costs, bad outcomes, mind-boggling bureaucracy, racial disparities, bankruptcies, geographic inequities, and obscene profiteering. The ugly truth is this. Health care is not treated as a human right in the United States of America. This fact is outrageous. And it is far past time that we change it. Say it loud for the people in the back. Health care is a human right. In North Carolina, two people were killed and four wounded Tuesday, when a man with a pistol opened fire at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, on the last day of classes. The shooting sparked widespread panic across the campus, with students and staff huddling in offices while police locked down buildings for hours. Exams were canceled through Sunday. Police later arrested 22-year-old student Tristan Andrew Terrell, saying the suspect was, quote, not somebody on our radar, unquote. 
There was no apparent motive for the shooting, according to the Gun Violence Archive. There have been over 100 mass shootings in the United States so far this year. In Minnesota, a jury has found former Minneapolis police officer Mohamed Noor guilty of third-degree murder and manslaughter in the killing of Justine Ruschek Damon, an Australian woman who called 911 to report a possible sexual assault in the alley behind her home. Noor, who was seated in the passenger seat, shot Ruschek through the open driver's side window of the vehicle as she approached his police cruiser in her pajamas. This is Justine's father, John Ruschek, speaking after the verdict. Justine was killed by a police officer, an agent of the state. We believe he was properly charged with a crime. The jury has returned a verdict of guilty on murder three and manslaughter two. We are satisfied with the outcome. The shooting is a rare case in which a black police officer killed a white woman. It sparked widespread protests and the resignation of the Minneapolis police chief. On Capitol Hill, black women leaders gathered Tuesday in defense of Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, one of the first two Muslim congresswomen in history and the first member of Congress to wear a hijab. Omar says death threats against her have spiked in numbers since President Trump tweeted a video juxtaposing her image with footage of the 9-11 attacks. Democracy Now! is at Tuesday's hands-off Ilhan Omar event. We'll play excerpts from it later in the broadcast and go to Capitol Hill to speak with Congressmember Omar herself. Democratic leaders Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer emerged from closed-door talks with President Trump at the White House Tuesday, saying they've made progress toward a $2 trillion plan to reinvest in U.S. infrastructure. News of the meeting prompted Republican lawmakers to express skepticism. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell rejected calls by Democrats to pay for an infrastructure bill by rolling back Republican tax cuts that overwhelmingly favor the wealthy, calling the proposal a non-starter. And in New York City, police Police arrested seven nonviolent protesters Tuesday as they peacefully blocked access to Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer's Manhattan office. The youth activists with the Sunrise Movement are calling on the Senate Minority Leader to endorse the Green New Deal, a resolution calling for a transformation of the U.S. economy by funding renewable energy while ending U.S. carbon dioxide emissions by 2030. I'm willing to get arrested and put my body on the line for the Green New Deal, because it means the bodies of all of the people who are being affected by the climate crisis. We are here demanding that Senator Schumer sign on to a Green New Deal. Stand with us, Chuck Schumer. Activists with the Sunrise Movement say they've asked Senator Schumer to convene town hall meetings to discuss his climate plan, but say their requests have been rebuffed or ignored. This is Araceli Jimenez, a resident of Brooklyn's Sunset Park neighborhood. I have lived in Sunset Park since I was four years old. It is a low-income, immigrant community of color, and it was ravaged by Hurricane Sandy. So I have seen what the climate crisis is going to do, what it's already doing to communities like mine all across this planet. And when our Senate minority leader refuses to co-sponsor the only plan on the table that is going to address the crisis at the scale that science and justice demand, then that is unacceptable. I will not stand for it, and neither should you! And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.